And welcome back to our weekly conversations with head football coach of the Purdue View A&M University Panthers, Coach Bubba McDowell. Coach, how you doing this week, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. We're going okay. better. We got that win, though, you know. Oh, no doubt about it. Look, uh, we were, were going over the game on Saturday during the broadcast, and I want to highlight the good. We'll touch on the questions, but I got to first commend you guys, man, on an excellent game plan and execution of the game plan, really, for the first three quarters, total domination of that game and uh, a totally different look, a more balanced attack with the throws and the runs. Um, what was your overall assessment of this past weekend's event against Abilene Christian? Uh, you, you hit it on the head, Mike. Uh, I was totally uh, uh, happy with the way the kids played. I told them at the end of the game I was proud of them. Uh, you know, we, we talked about coming out, establishing a game plan, a, uh, and, and make this a football game that we can win, and we did that. Uh, we, we fell short, and like I told them, the only reason why we fell short is only because, we, you know, we, we won the game. Like I told them, so, guy, we won this game, but we – you know, we lost the fourth quarter, the the last the, the last uh, quarter. And as you know, we always talked about playing four quarters of football. You know, uh, and if we had had we did that, you know, we definitely would have came out victorious in this game. Absolutely, we're talking right now. We're here for ball coach Bob McDowell for the Panthers, falling short to the Abilene Christian Wildcats on the road, twenty-one to thirteen. Now, um, there was total execution. You had one blemish on the special team with the blocked field goal, but Reyes was on money uh, as far as distance, 47, 46 yarder. I forget the attempt for the one that got blocked. But the question that, at least for me, you're in control of this ball game, Bubba, and mm -hmm. I know you're on the road and you want to make a statement. Do you second guess not going for the field goal at the 18 yard line, or would you do it all over? Oh, absolutely! That won't happen again. <laughs> that, <laughs> won't happen. that won't happen again. And again, I don't know how much more you know that would have would have made different wise. You know, again, you kind of second guess yourself. You know, had we had we gone and made it, um, maybe it, it would gave the um, gave us a, more of an upbeat tempo. You know. Uh, confident, as, as as one would say, um, then you know they still had to come down and score twice uh, at that particular point. But we were moving the ball really well, and I really believe at that particular time that we can get that first down. And I think had we uh, had we read it right, it was it was wide open, Mike. It was you know we we would have we would have got that first down. And I thought for sure to have you know go, if we had got this that. First down, we was we was going in to score because we were moving the ball on them. But you know, even though we was, wasn't executing some of those plays down that stretch, but I truly believe that uh, had we got that first down, we was going in to score. And again, you know, if I had to look back on it, you know, had it been a conference game, probably nah, I wouldn't have even second guessing. I would have went on ahead and went for the field goal because I'm more of an old school guy. You know, hey, when the points present itself, let's get them. Let's get the points, you know, and, and, and get out the field and get, and get ready to run down on kickoff. Yes, sir. Well, I'm definitely old school with you because we were doing the broadcast. I was looking at it. Of course, we're always the great coaches when we're with a microphone up in the sky, right? But yeah. you get that nine-point lead, um, you're on the road, your defense, man, I can't overemphasize how excellent those guys, well, they, were, they, were, they were hitting these guys in the mouth all night long. And it, it, it seemed like it gave them a little bit of momentum, they being the Wildcats. After that point is when the wheels started getting a little bit wobbly in that fourth quarter. Yeah, but again, the only, only reason why the wheels got wobbly is because we, we simply we, we ran out of gas. Uh, right. And those, guys, and those guys, you know, had come on the sideline and we were talking about, dude, what's going on? Everybody looked like they're tired. You know, our receivers wasn't running that last quarter. It was, we had trouble getting guys lined up, and, and I'm like, dude, what's going on with everybody out there? You know, I mean, again, it was just offense. It was uh, defense, even special teams. I mean, we missed several big – you know, he had several big runs on special teams that normally didn't, wouldn't happen with us because we're running down. But we 
looked totally exhausted, you know, that last stretch of the fourth quarter. I mean, we was, I think we were so tired, you know, guys were blowing assignments, and we were, we were in man coverage, and we, we, we were having guys covered, and they kept doing the same thing. Mike, they didn't do anything different that, that uh, second half that they didn't do the first half. I mean, they, as I said earlier in the week, they do simple stuff, but they do it very well. You know, they do it consistently. Where we didn't do that the first, that fourth quarter, you know, for whatever reason, and I believe it was just because we were just fatigued mentally, and we were blowing covers just like crazy in the cut in the assignments. Supposed to be in man, guys weren't running with their guys, the tight end who, you know, for some reason, you know, it, you should be able to see a boot, you know, right away, but you just letting guys run right by us, Mike, and I guess it just wasn't assignment perfect, you know, that, that, that last stretch. Yes, sir, and we did notice um, they had a high success rate, I think it was like 50% on third downs because it would be, you know, controlling the flow and then those third downs, they would extend that drive, and I guess that would lead to the fatigue, especially we're still, even though it's September, we're still dealing with summer temperatures. And not making any excuses, uh, but, look, if you're old school, like I, like I know you are, the only way you can fix conditioning, you got to run them a little bit more, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I know, absolutely. And, you know, and I got told guys in family, I said, you know, whatever it is we need to do, we need to fix it, you know, and also I had a concern early in the, uh, early as well, and that was, you know, I said, dude, we had guys out on the field almost two hours too early. You know, I said, it was hot out there. I went outside. I said, we got wide receivers out there running go routes, you know. I mean, not 20, man. They were out there in the 40. I had to come back out there to get them off the field. You know, as I told guys, I said, we can't have them guys out there on the turf that hot, you know, at that particular time during the day, you know, and, I truly believe it. It was a big factor down that stretch, you know, with uh, with a lot of those guys. And again, I understand going out doing their thing, but they got to be smart, and we got to be smart as coaches, you know, get these guys back in, get the rest, you know, not get exhausted, you know, physically and mentally. Before yes, sir. Start, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Now, uh, when we go back to it, and I want to highlight one player in particular before that, but. You're, when you're making your preparations, how hands-on are you when it comes to the offense and defensive schemes, defenses in particular because of your background, or do you leave that in the hands of your coordinators? How do you do that? I do. I, I do. I try not to do as much, uh, not get involved as much. Uh, now, I will, I will say this, you know, now that you mention it, offensively, uh, yeah, I let I let those guys handle because I am more of a defensive minded guy. Offensively, I just get over there, just kind of know what we're gonna do game plan wise. You know, and and like I said, I know I know a, a little bit about the offense, but not a whole lot. Um, learning, I learn a lot more as I go with them. I know the basic, especially when we you know go as coordinators uh, meeting with them, and um, and they give me their game plan, what they plan to do. So you know that kind of enlightens me more so on the offensive side defense. I know what's going on. Um, again, had we not making excuses again, had we had all our guys um, there for the game, we were missing five DBs, you know, and of those five DBs, we had, uh, shoot, four of them were starters, you know, one due to a, a personal deal, Travis Pearson, you know, uh, Bryce Turner was down with a, a, a ankle, he wanted to go, but I like no. You can go. Doesn't mean anything. This game let's get you healthy for a money game. Logan Jackson the same way. Um, then we have um, Juwan Lewis, uh, who we had, and D'Angelo, who we had to sit for dis- disciplinary reason. We had to suspend them for a game. So we, you know, and had we had those guys, uh, it wouldn't have been without a doubt. You know. Condition wise, now we could we can rotate those guys in like we normally do. Uh, but again, on the offense, we had Jay Stu down, and, and again we had Double A, you know, carrying the load quite a bit. So and then so we ended up having to take him off special teams that last quarter as well. Um, and then we had Trayvon Spiller down, um, who I thought would have been a huge factor in that game versus their DBs. But again, yes, sir. We still had yes, a chance, sir. Mike. We still had a chance. We just got we just didn't execute on because I think we just got fatigued down the end. Right. Well, you did answer the mystery that we were concerned about, uh, Jaden Stewart, uh, but hopefully all is well. 
uh, as they get prepared for the next opponent in Coin of Word. Now, Coin of Word seem to be on high octane right about now, scoring 55 points against Nevada, and they have always shown some offensive explosiveness. Now that you got this one behind you, lessons learned, guys will be in position. What are going to be some of your key factors this week against Incorn Word? Um, we just got to play our, play our defense. And, uh, again, you know, Coach Milton did. He called a great defense, but we just got to be able to be perfect. Simon, Simon, perfect, should I say. You know, do our job, man. I mean, you know, I, I know people look at it and see something totally different, you know, uh, outside of the football, you know, me, you know, as a fan. and But, you know, inside, I mean, they don't know these guys missing assignments, you know, alignment and all that, you know, you know as well as I know, all that plays a big factor in in the uh, success of the defense or offense. And when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you know, things can happen real real quickly as it, as it showed in the fourth quarter. And going into this week, I mean, shoot, like, you know, I'm going to have a meeting with them tonight and let them understand, like, guys, we got to get back on track, you know. If, if you guys got to get a little extra running in, you know, after practice, uh, you, you, you got to do that. If you want to be that team, you know, that we talked about at the uh, beginning of the year. You know, you got to do the extra in order to, to, to win this weekend against a really, really good team. Because, again, if, you, if we don't or if you don't, you know, it, it, you know, we can get exposed really, really fast. So it's going to be very important that we don't we, we don't repeat a fourth quarter that we had from uh, this past weekend with these guys. We got to play four quarters of football, you know, with a really good team coming in, throw that thing, air it out. As you mentioned, scoring 55 points. So, you know, we don't need everybody, you know, to uh, be 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 as perfect as possible against a good team, defensively and offensively. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, one thing, uh, and we're about to get to your letter grades for this week, I'm also impressed with the way that offensive line has been uh, putting things together and um, being able to execute up and down the field, whether it be run or pass, are you seeing the same thing that I've been seeing, sir? Yeah, coach. I'm like I said, they, like I said, we they know how good we are, and and, and that, again, that's why I told the coach. I said, look, man, we got a good team. You guys know that. Uh, I said, when you guys go in, correct these young men. Hey, I said, I don't want, I don't want you guys beating them up. I need you guys just hey, just coach them hard, but don't beat them up because again, they played a they played a good game. Like I said, I think we won it, but again, we just we just ran out of gas in the, at the end, you know. So. I need you to help me just continue to build their confidence up. You know, they played a really good game for three quarters. You know, we just got to finish that fourth one. Yes, sir. Now, when it comes to the uh, letter grades, offense, defense, special team, and we're going to throw in the coaching this week as far as uh, schemes and everything else, what's your letter grades for each category, sir? Uh, special teams, I would, and because of the debacle in the year, the fatigue factor, I, I would give us a B minus. You know, because we was good up until we was good up until then. Like those, you know, two big runs, you know, in which again field position they end up scored on. Uh, defensively, I, I would I would give us a B again because of the uh, lack of uh, conditioning at the end and a blown assignments. Uh, Again, versus a simple, simple offense, and you know, have we got with our guys on on all the route running that they, the simple route running that they did, you know, especially with the boots, you know, uh, we we could have shut them down, you know, just defensively, defensively alone. So uh, again, we just got to get better in better shape, you know, and, and do our assignment. Offensively, uh, I I would give us a B plus. I would give a B plus because again, we we kind of. Again, I, I keep reiterating, goes back to the conditioning part. Um, you know, we kind of stalled a little bit, I think, because of that. Um, and then we didn't, we wasn't able to move the ball. But again, those guys got to be in condition, especially on, on offense. As you know, they got to be in condition. You know, and they, and they got to get lined up. That last quarter, we was like all over the place, and we yelling on the field to get these guys lined up where when they know they should have been in a certain position to uh, execute the play. You know. So and that that in, in, in itself, as you know, we, we couldn't go fast enough for them, you know, because now we got guys moving all across the all across the uh, board, you know. When they get set, boom, we can go fast when they know what we're doing. But then when we 
on one side, then we try and have to call you and transition to the other side. That slows the play down for, uh, as far as us going fast. Okay. Hey. Coaches? Yes, sir. Yeah, coaches. I, I get the coaches. Uh, I get the coaches a B plus too, because uh, you know, even even at the end, um, you know, I thought again, you know, as a defense uh, coordinator, offensive coordinator, uh, they 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 had a great game plan. But you know as well as I know, I mean, a great plan is only a, a great game plan is only going to be executed by those players. So we as coaches again see something not working. We got to be able to make an adjustment really quickly, especially in situ- critical situations like that. Uh, and, again, uh, you know, I thought we should have did something defensively, but, again, I didn't step in. Uh, but I, I will from this day forward, you know, you know, voice my opinion. If I have to make the executive decision, I would do that at that particular time, you know, if it presents itself again. Because I was looking at it as they were doing the same simple boot stuff and our guys was tired, wasn't covering, so we should have just went to, you know, our bread and butter, you know, uh, just his own coverage and let him run right into it. But again, you know, we live and learn as a head coach and, you know, now I know, now I know, and, you know, we're going to get better. So I'll, I'll give him a B, B plus uh, um, at, at best. Okay, very good. Uh, like I said, man, an exciting brand of football. Um, very pleased with what we've been seeing thus far not just as a fan, a supporter, as a broadcaster, as a reporter. Everything is heading in the right direction. Now, but I, I, I failed to ask you this at the beginning, but i got to ask you now, man, and the people probably want to know this too. Every coach has something superstitious-wise that they do. <laughs> what is yours, man, before the game? What's your, what's your routine that you have to go through before the game? I don't be honest, Mike. I, I really don't. I don't have one. You know, I, every game I go on, I'm doing something different. Now. You know, like I mean, first game I didn't do anything. I just kind of stayed in the locker room, and then, um, then second, uh, this game, you know, I actually went outside. You know, uh, me and Lieutenant Robson, you know, we went outside and we just started talking, looking, looking at the guys warm up, and then, you know, and just got them off the field, went back in, and got dressed. Uh, and it came on back out. Uh, I, I don't have one that I know of, you know. But if, you know, but if I if I if I do, I mean, I'm pretty sure they they they'll let me know because a lot of my guys they're very they're, they're very uh, good at watching me and doing certain things. Like I mean, I know like like during practice, you know, they could kind of you know quote me verbatim, you know, and then start <laughs> doing something. You know, one of the yes, guys, sir. And stuff. okay, hold on, this is this is Coach McDowell. Yada 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 yada, and you know, and we have fun with that, right. and I love it because you know they know me, I know them, they they know what I expect from them and what they expect from me. Cause, but it's fun. I, I like I said, I don't know if I have any really at this particular time, but I'm pretty sure I do. Just haven't really noticed it. Well, I know you got. Well, you gotta have some certain type of music you like listening to to kind of get your mind away. And I know you got your game plan. You've been grinding. What kind of music you listen to, coach, before game time? I listen to all. I mean, I, I do a little little R and B. Um, um, some some sometimes I'll switch it up. I do a little I do a little gospel. Again, it just depends on you know what I'm feeling at that particular time. You know, or shoot, next thing you know, it might be a little might be a little rap. You know, so I, I listen to it all. It just depends on what what bubble. Okay, is it is it, like go, is it gonna be that eighties rap, nineties rap, or this new millennial rap, coach? It's both, it's both, but you know, it's more in that, that, that 80s, yeah, yeah, it's more there you 80s, go. So a little L-L-J there you go. in there. You little know, L-L, L-L, Run DMC, I, I got DMC. you, man, I got yeah. you. Fight the Houdini. power. Houdini, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fight the power, oh, man, there you go, there you go. Well, look, Coach, you put whatever you need to put in your mind as we get ready to host the Incarnate World Cardinals this weekend. On the heel, 6 p.m. is the kickoff. You can listen here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network from beginning to end. Coach, I want to thank you so much for making yourself available as usual. I'm going to give you some closing thoughts and comments at this time, sir. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we, we played well. We played well enough to win. Um, and everybody can see that. A lot of guys, a lot of people, just, they've been calling, you know, and just, you know, supporting the PV uh, football teams and keep your head up. And truly, thank you guys for 
having our back, you know, we, we will get better, guys. We, we continue to get better. Uh, like I said, we just got to be able to, again, just finish out that, that fourth quarter, you know. I want you guys, you know, that, you know, that are able to come out to uh, watch us against a good team, football team this weekend coming up and, you know, support the uh, team, you know, and help us, you know, to a victory, you know, cheer us on to a victory because, we, again, it's not like we don't have a chance. I know a lot of people didn't give us a chance with the uh, ACU, you know, uh, game we should have won, and they probably saying the same thing against the uh, URW. So, you know, come on out, cheer us on, you know, and, and, and watch a good football game. All right, Coach Brother McDonald with the Purview and University Panthers. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you guys so much for joining in with us. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.